Welcome, you guys, to the Proclivity Podcast. This is Coach Joel, and I'm joined by the fabulous, amazing Coach Emily. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, Joel? Fantastic. You got your blood drawn this morning. How come? I did. Uh, because we're curious. I'm yeah. curious to see uh, what my cholesterol lipid panel looks like. And I know my doctor won't do a typical or the or the the test that I want. So most doctors will only test the typical LDL, HDL, total cholesterol. Yeah, right. we know better that you need to dig deeper to find the real the real results to see if I'm actually at risk for cardiovascular disease. So that's what I did. Boom! You guys were going to be doing a. Uh daily drive on cholesterol coming up here soon so stay tuned if you don't know what the daily drive is it is a new series of our podcast which is short 15 to 20 minutes it's called the daily drive because that's about how long it takes the average american to get to work it's 15 to 20 minutes and so we give you really quick uh, powerful information and we're going to talk about cholesterol because, man, is that one that gets real confusing real quick, right? My cholesterol's high, can't have eggs, can't eat red meat, you know, and we're missing out on all these nutrients. And then we start having all these other different problems from it when really we're testing the wrong things, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. For sure. Yeah. We, we'll get into it. <laughs> we'll get into it. I love it. I love it. Um, you guys, if you're joining us, we appreciate you so much. Everything that we give here on the Proclivity Podcast it is all of our secrets. We don't hold back. We want to give you the highest grade content available. If you like our podcast, please review it. Say some nice things about us and give us five stars. If you're not going to give us five stars, never mind. We don't want your review. <laughs> Just kidding. We we love you guys either way. Um, We're going to dive in today into the carnivore diet. The carnivore diet. This is something that Coach Emily did. When was that? Like two weeks ago? Three weeks ago? Uh, It was the beginning of January. Yeah. Yeah. Beginning of January. Uh, She tried out the carnivore diet. You guys may have heard of the carnivore diet. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Yep, before we get in to the podcast, we do want to thank our sponsors. Emily, we got a new sponsor, didn't we? We do. I don't have the code yet for it, though. Fantastic. Just tell them who we're, <laughs> who we're working with. Fatco. Fatco is an amazing skincare uh, company that uses all super clean, high-quality ingredients. Um, the ones I specifically use, I use it for deodorant. And then even more so my son, he has a skin genetic skin condition where he has super dry skin. And so we use their baby butter, their balm is the best. I I put some on this morning on my face, the miraculous face cream. It felt so smooth. So nice. (laughs) Did it smell good? Uh, or is that a non-smelling one? It, it, they have well, scented and unscented. Yeah, I think there might have been some lavender in there or something. I didn't smell it too much, which I'm I'm okay with. Yeah. I'm okay with. <laughs> so we'll have it. We'll have a code out for you guys for that. We also want to thank yeah. Eight Sleep, you guys. If you if you don't know what Eight Sleep is, go to eightsleep.com. Check it out. Sleep is so important. And what Eight Sleep does is it helps you get even better sleep. You, you just gotta check it out. You can use the code Joel at checkout to receive $150 off. Check it out. If you guys have questions, let us know. All right. Let's dive into the carnivore diet. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. (laughs) Because you invited me to do it, and I was like, yes, totally, I'm going to do it. And I was just like, then I went to Costco on the day you guys were doing it, and I'm like, no, I just got like $100 worth of vegetables (laughs) and (laughs) non-like carnivore stuff. So I didn't end up doing it. Um, yeah. Yet you did. And so what we're going to do is we're going to dive in and talk about the mm-hmm. uh, experience that you had, the benefits of the carnivore diet, um, and how you guys can get started on the carnivore diet if you want to try it. So let's dive on, dive in to the simplicity of, these, of, of the carnivore diet. What the heck 
is it? <laughs> so it's just like what it sounds if you know what a car carnivore is. You eat meat. And it's that simple. <laughs> Yet, uh, speaking in today's terms, so, well, I'll rewind. So we know what the paleo diet is, right? That's something that our, our paleolithic ancestors ate. Very simple foods, nothing processed. Uh, carnivore is a step further, meaning, you know, at times that we, our ancestors only ate meat. That's all they had access to, and they thrived and did well. And so today we're using that as a therapy for some conditions. So a lot of people who have unexplained autoimmune issues that they cannot improve, people who are willing to go take that extra step to say, hey, I'm suffering, uh, I'm willing to try anything. And carnivore is definitely one of those last ditch efforts to try and figure out what they can do to help with their symptoms. And those symptoms are a broad range of things. So skin issues, gut issues, brain fog, joint pain, inflammation in general. Um, and it's something that doctors are using now. I know I have, a, I have a few clients who their doctors are, are backing them if they want to do it. A lot of functional medicine practitioners and nutritionists as well. There are definitely people on the other end who do not support it. Um, and we can, yeah, we can get into that <laughs> if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, getting into the nitty and gritty, you know, if there's some people that may be listening right now and like, uh, you know what? We were talked about cholesterol when we got on. Uh, you know, I, I'm not supposed to have that much red meat. It's not good for me. Yet I have all these other different conditions that are going on. Is that a good fit for somebody who's mm -hmm. saying that they have high cholesterol? Um, you know, who are the people that maybe shouldn't be doing the carnivore diet? Mm, yeah. So if you were to get the correct lipid panels done, so you, again, that's another another day. Yet reach out to me if you feel that you've been told that you have high cholesterol and that you shouldn't be eating certain foods. Um, you you may you. It's very likely that you you don't have to be avoiding these things, especially when it comes to quality of the meat. So the fat in the meats and the quality of it matters highly. So yeah, there might be a small population of people who have truly uh, high cholesterol and they're trying to lower it. And it is no, like they have found out for themselves that it is saturated fat from likely poor quality, conventionally raised animals. So yes, there might be someone who it might not be as easy to do with. yet. That's something that I would want to talk to a person about. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, that, that would be, I mean, the main one yet some the other people who I'd say it's not a good fit for are those who, don't want to commit to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very much a commitment. Um, I've done the AIP paleo protocol before, and I thought that was tough. And carnivore is another, it's another level. Um, you definitely have to be prepared mentally for social settings, for grocery shopping, for prepping your food mentally for the cravings um, and stuff like that. So someone who's committed for sure. Or maybe somebody who just, you know, doesn't want to eat animal products in general. Are you, are you saying, oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah I'd be curious as to why, but yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just a, you know, um, personal, you know, choice that they don't want to, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, going through the, the carnivore diet, um, we know that it's eating meat. Okay. So, mm -hmm. all right. Pretty simplistic. Uh, you know, I just eat meat. Okay. So that means I go to in and out and I just order, <laughs> right burger patties, right? I think it's called the flying Dutchman, which is just, oh. you can't even have cheese though, right? Can no, you so that's another good question. There's a lot of different variations of the carnivore diet. The true carnivore diet is just meat, but ideally it's nose to tail, meaning you're eating the entire animal. So another reason why people say, oh, the carnivore diet is going to cause other issues such as scurvy. It's usually because of lack of vitamin C. Um, yeah, if you can eat the entire animal, you're going to get all of the nutrients that you need. Yeah. A lot of people are not willing to do that. So there's, there's a variety of ways to do carnivore. You can do that. What we did was we did all good quality meat. We added in a liver supplement or a organs supplement. So we could get that vitamin C in those other nutrients because we weren't eating all the organs of an animal. Um, and then we also added in eggs. And so that's something that I know I do well with. Um, and I knew it would help me get by through <laughs> do those two weeks that I did do it. It helped a lot as far as the variety of food. Yeah, there's others who do varieties of it where they include 
say berries or olives or avocado. Um, they add in a, little, a few things here and there. Yet usually if you're doing it for therapy, you're trying to figure out something that's wrong with you. You start with all meat and then you can slowly add these things back in. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the, the important part is the, the quality of it matters. So just living off of yeah. hamburger patties, yeah, right. you're not, you're not going to feel too good. Yeah. So the, so what we did, we actually we did get hamburger patties, yet we got grass fed beef patties and the, literally the only ingredients I believe were salt, um, because a <laughs> two with the carnivore diet, you're only supposed to have salt, no herbs, no spices. Mm. And so, yeah, you definitely want to pay attention to quality because that is a huge part of it. You're eating protein and fat. It's all, that's all you're getting. You're eating zero carb protein, fat, that fat, whatever that animal is eating, oftentimes conventionally raised animals are eating poor quality grains or food mm-hmm. that it turns into that fat that we don't like the polyunsaturated fatty acids that are very low quality and causing oxidization and inflammation in our body. And so we want to be looking for pasture raised meat in general, which means hundred percent grass fed, which means they're living on a pasture. They're not factory farmed. Um, yeah, and so on. Which brings us back to the point that we rep out time and time and time and time and time and time and time again, guys. Quality matters. Okay? Mm-hmm. You're, you're either going to pay the farm now or pay the pharma later. Okay? Again, pay the farm or pay the pharma. It's going to come around, y'all. Like, it, it, there is no one way a, a, about it. And if you want to, go ahead and just take a look at the statistics of what's going on with metabolic disease, with obesity, with uh, even what's going on with COVID and how drastically people are affected by COVID when they have these comorbidities. Mm -hmm. Quality, guys, pay for it, okay? That Yes, that means that you might not get those new shoes. That's okay because you're going to live a longer life happier life so the carnivore diet although it seems simple (laughs) you still need to know where are you getting your meat from Mm -hmm. how is it raised being more and more part of your food is so important you guys understanding where that cow came from where that chicken came from where that pork came from these are all really really important things and so, yes, is there a right way and a wrong way to do it? If you're going to in and out and you're getting beef <laughs> patties every single day, will you get into ketosis? Yeah, sure. Right? And so you might lose some weight, but it's not going to feel healthy for you. Right? And you're going to have some GI distress because, again, it's the base of are we filling our micronutrient cup? Are we getting the right appropriate foods? Mm-hmm. So... We know that there's a right right and wrong way to do it. We know that it's for some people, not for others. Let's talk about your experience with it. Mm-hmm. Run us through that. Yeah. What, from, from, from the beginning to end, give us, uh, give us a breakdown mm-hmm. on how it was for you. Yeah, so as you mentioned before, uh, you had gone grocery shopping and were like, oh, I don't want to waste all this food. So, you, so even before we had our start date in mind, we were running through all of the other food in our fridge that would become perishable. So we we ran through most of our veggies. We made sure there weren't you know other foods that were going to go to bad, other than what was around for my baby, which was another challenge. I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so we yeah we prepared as far as getting rid of the perishable foods that we weren't going to be eating, and then we also prepared by stocking up on good quality meat, which is very expensive, especially right now, unfortunately in our day and age. Um, yet we found, um, like I mentioned, grass fed beef at Costco, the patties, we got a bunch of tri-tips cause that's my favorite meat. I'm not a huge meat lover in the first place, honestly, as far as taste goes, I'm very specific to what kinds I like. And so I knew for me to stick to this, I was going to have to find the meats that I really liked. And so for me, that meant to splurge a little bit on getting some tri-tips. Um, and then those grass fed beef patties, and then we got some butcher box meat, which there's a lot of different um, good high quality meat options out there. If you buy in bulk, you can get a little bit of a discount. 
And, and so we, we started out with, okay, I, my goal was to have two meals a day and see how that went um, and just really beef them up. <laughs> no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Pun intended, uh, for sure. <laughs> and um, I should say my husband, he, did, he had cheese and eggs. I just did eggs along with the meat. Um, and so I, a typical meal, we started out with a, a beef patty and I think I had four eggs maybe the first time. And then I had for dinner uh, four or five ounces of tri-tip and another four eggs. And then I did that for about three days and then I got, or maybe two days and I was feeling real hungry. <laughs> I, I calculated the macros out and it was 1400 calories and I was like, ooh. That is low for me, especially if I'm getting some activity in. And, and going into it, I knew I wasn't going to be doing some crazy hard CrossFit workouts because I knew my energy levels as far as those sprint, uh, the high intensity, I knew that was going to be more challenging with no glucose. And so I stuck two walks, some jogs, and some body weight workouts. I did after one week in, Casey and I, my husband and I, we did a CrossFit workout and I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm going to test this out and see how it feels. I didn't do the prescribed weight because it's a bunch of heavy cleans yet. Um, it was still heavy and it's still a lot of weight for something for, for what I was doing as far as the carnivore diet, not getting any carbs in. And that was tough, <laughs> but it was something that I wanted to test out. And I, it, it went as I expected. I got through it. I was fine. I had the stamina and the endurance. I just didn't have the, the superpower uh, when doing those quick lifts. Um, so moving a little bit backwards, as far as a few days in, I was like, oh, Casey, have you gone to the bathroom yet? Have you gone number two? <laughs> mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I've gone every day. Knowing he has great uh, GI health history and me, I have not great history as far as my GI health. And so I was not surprised, you know, when you're not getting any carbs and you're not getting any fiber in. So it makes sense that you would go less. Um, and so for the first four days, I didn't go number two. I didn't have a bowel movement. <clears throat> um, and then I did. <laughs> and then it was not normal. <laughs> yes. Which again, I expected it. I've read lots of people's experiences on doing the carnivore diet, whether it be you have extreme diarrhea or it's sludgy and dark and literally looks like, yeah, sludge coming out. And that, that was my experience. Actually, I had both. It, it, it uh, alternated throughout the two weeks. <laughs> and I would say, so after the, I think the fourth day was the first time I had a bowel movement. And then after that, it was maybe every two or three days. So that's literally just eating straight meat and eggs. Wow. And yet in the past, so say, you know, you think about that, you're like, oh, so you're constipated. I was like, no, I didn't feel constipated at all. Right. I had zero GI discomfort, zero bloating, mm -hmm. nothing. Like I felt great. Like, you know, the feeling after you go to the bathroom, you're like, I feel light and yeah. great. Yeah. Like ready to go. I felt like that the entire time until literally right before I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and then it came quick. Yes. <laughs> I was like, where's the toilet? Um, <laughs> but that was literally it. It was so quick. And that has never been my experience, at least for the last 10 years. I've, you know, I, that's why I got into nutrition was because I had lots of GI issues from years and years of poor quality foods and stress and not knowing how to do proper digestive habits. And so I am still recovering 10 years later after getting into this from certain things. And I know things about myself. Um, yet this is the... So this, yeah, this is the best I ever felt as far as no bloating, zero. I usually have some little level of it throughout the day, especially after eating. Yeah, this is the best I ever felt. So, so a week into it, we felt great. My husband and I were like, oh yeah, like as far as like energy, mental clarity, we feel fine. We're getting through our day. We, around day four, five, six, we we're like, okay, we need to get more pork rinds. <laughs> <laughs> we were missing a crunch <laughs> and a little snack. And so I, I ended up having two meals with a snack of pork rinds and maybe an egg or two if I got hungry um, in my day. Well, that would be my dessert. <laughs> Good quality pork rinds. Again, speaking of quality, Epic brand is a really high quality uh, brand of pork rinds. So that was a huge savior as well. And then after that first week, I started adding in a third meal. I was getting hungry. Um, and I... I I reeled back my workouts even more. Again, stuck to walking and light jogging, maybe a couple lunges, squats, push-ups here and there, and mm -hmm. that was it. In that second week, my husband was like, oh, 
I don't know how much longer I can do this. <laughs> like, this is getting tough. He's like, I'm feeling myself really tired. Like, he got really tired a couple nights, went to bed super early. I, on the other hand, like, I, I've been doing this as far as being fat adapted for a long time, years and years. And so I felt like my stamina was great the entire time. The only issue as far as my physical energy being an issue was when I was doing, when I tried to do something harder in a workout. So again, I avoided doing heavy lifts and sprints and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, so then we, we made it to two weeks. We had social settings in between. Um, just to, just, I think, believe, I believe one. Yeah. I had a girl's night and I went and I brought, it was so funny. I made paleo cookies for them. Couldn't have any of it. Wow. Which is fine. <laughs> brought those there were dips and like great a great spread of appetizers while out there yet i i had planned this out right so i ate before so i wasn't super hungry i, I mean i really wasn't hungry um ate before and then while i was there i had a a waterloo which i'm always like oh is this allowed because there's natural flavoring in there mm. yet i was like that was that was the only option they had i should have brought my water and i didn't plan for that um so lesson learned there but I felt fine. I was not, honestly, I was not hungry yet. I did have cravings throughout the week of, and it was mainly when I was feeding my child because I pulled out all the food, the nut butters, the nuts, um, the fruit, the veggies, all, mm -hmm. of, all of those things. And I was like, oh, I just, because oftentimes when I'm eating with my son, I'll eat what he doesn't finish because it's usually the same thing we're eating anyway. Totally. And I don't like to mix food. <laughs> right. And so I didn't do any of that. And I didn't, uh, yeah obviously didn't do any of that yet. It, it was a challenge and I was like, oh, I just want a bite of nuts so butter or a handful of cashews um, or some veggies or avocado. I just want to add avocado to my burger and my eggs or, you know, so that was tough. And it was much, it was very helpful having my husband alongside me to, for us to share that experience. Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I want that too. Or I want chocolate. Yes. Um, yeah, we can do this two weeks. Two weeks is not, not that bad. Um, 30 days is what I usually recommend for someone to do if they are doing it for a therapeutic reason, um, typically because it takes around three to four weeks for that inflammation. You know, you might have a, a bacterial issue in your gut and it takes that long for it to completely die off. And so, so we, but we decided two weeks, we're like, we can do this for two weeks. We've been talking about it for a while. We're like, oh, shoot, a week, two weeks. I'm like, oh, so we, that's what we came to and we did it. And then when we came back to real food this is another lesson learned which i knew it was going to happen we did not have a real plan it was my brother's birthday i was like oh it's gonna be our first meal back tacos hooray oh yes <laughs> and so we we didn't we didn't hold back as far as what we ate what i would typically recommend is you introduce one food group back slowly at a time so say is avocado if you, again if you're doing this for a very specific reason it'd be avocado and wait two days and see how you feel any reactions right and then add another thing back in yeah we just went we just went for it the nice thing is my family is extremely healthy as well so we had you know there's no gluten i didn't have any dairy there's no other processed food so it's still all very high quality yet it was all veggies and I had a siete tortilla and all, you know all the different varieties. Yeah, I felt fine. Um, I definitely felt way fuller. My my belly went out. I'm like, oh, I mean, and I would I expected that because I ate a ton, a lot more fiber. And mm. It was probably a little bit too much as far as my first meal back and and even the the days uh, right after. Yet, I uh, I have since had the best bowel movements, the healthiest bowel move movements in the most since then. I, and they still have been that way. Wow. And that has been since maybe I was like in elementary school. I don't know, forever since I can remember. Wow. So <laughs> that has been the biggest takeaway for me and, and the biggest benefit, I should say, um, post carnivore. And then also, you know, rewinding back to when I was checking my aura ring for what, how my sleep was going while I was doing the diet. I checked on the last night, my, my ring actually died and I didn't realize it for a few days in between, but on the last night of doing it, it was the best sleep I've ever recorded as far as HRV, the amount of deep sleep, zero wake ups, zero disturbances. Um, and I could feel it too. Like I could go to bed and, and I could feel it in the morning when I woke up and I'd be like, oh, I feel rested, like super rested. And so, yeah, those were the main benefits to me and the main challenges. I can't help but think, right? And we talk about this. 
Simple and easy are not the same thing. Yet again, guys, repetition is the mother of all skills, and so we will repeat it time and time and time again. Quality foods. We don't getting quality foods, eating honestly less than we think we need to eat. We're not saying that you shouldn't eat enough. That that is not what we are saying. We are saying when you eat, you should have a hearty meal. Mm-hmm. Yet, we are sold a bill of goods to eat all the time and all these variations and we need to eat this and that and this wild berry from the Amazon and this you know, special uh, blubber from the North Arctic and yet so many different communities thousands of years ago ate one particular thing, right? If you were up in the Arctic, you ate the blubber. That was all you ate. You didn't have the berries. <laughs> And yet their bodies did just fine. And yet, here we go. We took away a bunch of things, got it really simple, high quality meat, but no fruits, no vegetables. And here are all the benefits that come with it. Yeah. And a a lot of people would ask, well, why no veggies? I thought veggies were like the number one safe food. And for a lot of people, they are. Yet for a lot of people, they aren't. You know, if you're having a lot of digestive issues, if you're constantly bloated, you've tried different, you know, things as far as eliminating certain foods or digestive habits or supplements or whatever it be. There are a lot of people who eat veggies and it causes issues for them. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. Um, yet usually it's a GI issue or it's just your body not liking the plant matter. And so that's why a lot of people move towards this is because meat, when it, eaten at high quality and in variety. So it's a lot of beef and like I said, nose to tail. Um, it, that is like the least likely food that one is to be allergic to out of everything. Because? And so that is why it, it is so helpful. How, how come? Uh, because it, it's because plant matter has these anti, these phytonutrients in that, that, that it's like a defense mechanism for the plant when they're living in the wild. And that can be problematic when it comes into our body. So that's why you can get GI issues, you can get inflammation, um, brain fog, those types of things. And again, for some people, it doesn't affect them as much. Yet for others, it totally can. Right, you guys. Every living thing on this planet is trying to continue to live, including plants, right? They don't have gnashing teeth to be able to fight So they create these different chemicals to be able to go, hmm, that doesn't doesn't taste so right or doesn't settle right. Mm -hmm. Yet, you know, and a lot of us don't think about that. No, that's not, we're not telling you not to have vegetables. That's not what we're saying. Yet again, the simplicity of things, simplifying things, listening to your body, red light, yellow light, green light being able to be in tune. And when we're running at a thousand miles an hour, you guys, we're unable to listen to our bodies. And that's one of the things that we focus on in the proclivity method is being able to get you to recognize and be aware of where you're at through digestive habits, sitting down, smelling your food, recognizing what your body is going through, these are all really important things. So yes, we're talking about the carnivore diet, yet it's not this band-aid where it's just like, I eat like garbage, I have terrible digestive habits, I'm running around all the time, I have a terrible uh, mindset, my language about myself is atrocious, I have this ugly identity about myself, and I think I'm going to fix it through two weeks with the carnivore diet. It's not what we're saying. There's more to it. Yeah. And especially if you're not used to eating that much protein, that much fat, you are going to have more runs to the bathroom while doing that. (laughs) I feel I was lucky because I'm used to eating a lot of that anyways. Yet the person who is not is going to, it is going to be challenging as far as your, your digestive habits. You have to sit down. You have to chew your food more to produce more of the enzymes to break it down. And then, and then I'll add too, as far as those toxins and those phytonutrients that the plants have to fight off their enemies, and that's why sometimes they can be a problem in our body, those decrease when you cook food. So if you are having bloating or digestive issues that you can't figure out, yet you're eating veggies still, cooking your veggies can be a giant game changer. If you're eating a lot of raw veggies, that could be the, that could be the reason. So try that out. 
Mm, is there any particular uh, vegetables that you know can cause more GI distress in its raw form? Yeah, yeah. So kale is a big one, so, which I know. Like I, I used to eat a ton of kale salads, and I know a lot of people do. Um, and then a lot of cruciferous, so leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables. So things like broccoli, you know, the fibrous stuff really. And then some of the leafy green stuff is a little, little harder to break down. Yeah. So steaming it, cooking it, however you can break it down a little bit is super helpful for your body. And it's, it's those vegetables, the way that I like looking at it, right? And correct me if I'm wrong here, Coach Emily, is those uh, cruciferous vegetables are the ones that you look at like cauliflower, broccoli. Can you imagine pulling it out of the bag and just eating it, right? Yeah, some people can, but it's usually not like, oh yeah, those Brussels not sprouts, I just pull it right back, right out and just start chewing on it, right? The, the, those foods that mo most people are gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna cook that, which is different from say like cherry tomatoes or cucumbers or bell peppers right? Which are a little bit easier to be able to go, oh, I can cut that up and I can eat it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. There are still some people who, no matter what it is, they're sure. going to have an issue with, but yes, in general. Yes. Makes sense. So here's the big question. One, well, let's just start off with this. I got my second question. One, <laughs> would you do it again? Yeah, I plan to. I plan to, I want to, I want to do it again and potentially longer yet yeah, that it requires planning, especially for our family. So, yep. 30 days. Yeah, that would be the goal. And what are you hoping to get out of it doing 30 days? See if there's any difference from two weeks to the 30 days. Um, mm -hmm. and again, I think it's a great reset for the gut. Um, I, I know I still have some gut issues because, you know, for example, I ate plantain chips the other day and I, those have always been an issue. I love them. Yet if I eat too, you know, past a certain amount, I get bloating because they're a uh, insoluble fiber and, and that can be a sign of SIBO. It could be a sign of a couple different things yet. Um, I had some other day and I, I had those issues again. So it, it's experimentation for myself and then also to help with clients because I learned so much through that experience of how to stay prepped what to do when you are in the situations of like, oh, I'm craving food or I'm super mm. hungry and what to add in. Like I, I did have element, I should say as well, to help keep electrolytes up. Without that, I would have had to add a lot more salt and take in magnesium supplements, um, which I still did, but I would have had to take a lot more. Like I added so much salt to everything. One, I craved it. Two, you need it when you're not eating zero carb. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, it literally just experimentation. And I like, you know, I honestly liked the way I felt doing it. And so seeing if it brought about any other changes for myself. Next time I'll join you. All right. 30 days. <laughs> I, who knows? Like okay. let's do 30 days and then I'm going to swim across Lake Tahoe. I don't, I don't know. You know, you know how <laughs> I, I always tell Emily, you guys, I, I, I really like testing my body and I'm just wondering if one of these days I just don't show up to the office. You know what happened? I'm dead. Sure. I'm dead. I went, I went three days without eating and then ran a marathon up into the, the mountains to wrestle a bear to see if I had the strength to, uh, to win. And the bear ate me alive. Who knows, you guys? Who knows? So let's talk about, let's get away from that, okay? <laughs> Hopefully I'm not dying anytime soon, guys. Uh, let's get into people who are interested, they've listened to you, they're always, you know what? Uh, yeah, I got some GI issues. I got, I got these different things. Who particularly would it be best for to try out the carnivore diet? If they're having, you know, certain symptoms, uh, if they're looking for weight loss, who's the ideal person, you know, and we know that everyone's different. Uh, yet, who would you suggest the carnivore diet to? Yeah, so someone who is having a chronic health issue and nothing else has worked and you are in pain, right? Um, someone who doesn't want to always rely, you know, go back to antibiotics over and over again, who doesn't want to just be a pit on the medication that doesn't really work and is just a band aid. And like I mentioned before, someone who's committed to the process. So I've had clients before who, who are like, 
uh, you know, they need baby steps to get into doing certain things. That's a lot of people and totally natural and fine. Yet there are some people who are like, you know what, I'm in so much pain. Tell me what to do. I will do exactly that. And those are the people who I'd recommend this for because it is challenging for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, yet it there it comes with the benefits. So I, I had a friend who did it. He had psoriasis on his arm, a rash mm -hmm. and for years, for years. And then he did this. He did it the first time for a week. I don't think there was much change there. And then he, he saw that it was challenging and learned from that experience. And then he did, uh, I believe it was 30 days. And then his, his psoriasis completely disappeared. So those types of people who, again, you're like this, I, you know, this has been happening to me for a long time and I'm in pain and I'm ready to try whatever yet I would try it with the help of a nutrition coach, a functional medicine practitioner practitioner or a doctor. So you do not get those things like scurvy. You don't have certain mm -hmm. nutrient deficiencies. You're not passing out because of electrolyte uh, insufficiency. And those are things that I could help with and someone else can help with as well. With that said, who shouldn't do the carnivore diet? Yeah, I would say someone who's had any kind of eating disorder in the past, as far as feeling restricted, um, you know, that mental game that goes in your head of like, oh, I can't have that. And then it, it causes you stress because of it. Um, because there's a lot, this is the, the most restrictive diet there is. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so if you've had a lot of issues around food, you know, your relationship with food, that is something that I would not recommend. Again, unless it's your last resort and you have a, a support team for yourself. And then like you mentioned before, if you're not a huge meat fan, obviously it's gonna be even more challenging, right? Like I said, I'm not a giant meat fan, yet there are certain things that I do like and I made it work for me. Right. Um, but yeah, and then and then if you do have known high cholesterol and you know is from the foods and you're working on a very specific diet around that to improve it, then that you know, that's usually a very small percent of the population though. Right, right. What about the person that's just like, I wanna lose weight, I wanna lose twenty pounds. Yeah. Is this the right diet? <laughs> You could, and you will lose weight likely if you do it a certain way. Yeah, I would not have that as my first first path. <laughs> I, I wouldn't personally because it's hard socially. It's um, and again, it's challenging. Yeah, if you're that kind of personality, I, I would have a support system still. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you know, there's uh, there's particular people who have actually asked me about the carnivore diet, and they particularly mm -hmm. want to lose weight. Yet mm. I knew their digestive habits, how they ate. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, sure, guys, we can, yeah. we can say don't eat this and you can do right. it for 30 days, right? Yeah. And it's, it's a short-term thing. I don't recommend doing this long-term. And we know for sustainable weight loss and health, you need to find something that works for you in the long-term. And this mm -hmm. is definitely not that. I know there are some people out there who do carnivore long-term, yet that's not, that's not the normal person. <laughs> So this is more of like a reset. Um, and if, if those, you know, challenges or resets are things that actually feel like help you, then sure. But I'll, the majority of people, we want to work on habits over the long run to find sustainability. There it is. There it is. And so if somebody's going to get started with this, they, they fit the, the criteria in terms um, they're looking for a reset. They have some good digestive habits and they've been working on their, their health. What are some really important things for them to know before they get mm -hmm. started? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I would say first making sure you're getting enough electrolytes. So stock up on salt, magnesium element, um, those things you definitely have to have. Like for me, I pretty much doubled my usual intake. You know, I usually have one to two elements a day for this. I had, th I had probably had four, sometimes five a day. Plus mm. I added in way more salt to my food. Um, so electrolytes, number one, number two, um, man, this is tough. Again, I'd have a support system and, and then knowing what you do in social settings. And when you do get hungry, what can you be prepared for that? So it's like, anytime I recommend to a client, like, if you're going to skip breakfast because you're not hungry or you're going to, you know, wait, hold off on a meal because you're not hungry, well, at least be prepared to know what you're going to do when you are hungry so you don't, you know, go binge on something else. Mm -hmm. Have a plan for what you're going to have, a.k.a. be prepared, have the have the meat prepared, and then have the eggs if you're doing eggs on hand too to have. I 
hope that answers that question. I'm, I'm trying to think of anything else yet. Yeah. And then, and then I should say the last thing, if you are not eating nose to tail, then supplementing with a liver, uh, sorry, a, a, an organ supplement, um, or vitamin C at least. And, and would that even, I mean, for the, even just for two weeks, you know, that it would be important to be able to have that. Yeah, I would say so to, to be on the safe side. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, typically it's a longer run that you want to be more careful about, but I, I wanted to play it safe. Playing it safe. Coach Emily, that, I love it because I'm wrestling <laughs> bears. You're playing it safe. <laughs> I have a child to take care of, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I knew you before your child, and you were such a wild woman. <laughs> you're very, you're, yep, you're correct. <laughs> yes, I know I'm correct. There's a yin and a yang to this, okay, to this partnership. If you all have not uh, recognized it at this point, uh, there is a yin and yang for sure. <laughs> all right, so anything else? with the carnivore diet before we we sign off i mean it you know recapping everything that we've we've talked about uh one of the things that really had me leaning in was the reset that it did to uh your your gi in terms of your bowel movements which is like Mm -hmm. guys we talk about poop it's what we do (laughs) right because it's a great signal or signal to how our gi is doing and so when we're getting on regular bowel movements, this is a good thing. You're going to feel better. You're going to have more energy, right? These are great things. Uh, so being able to, in two weeks, have some of the best bowel movements continuing that yeah. you've had since you were in elementary school, <laughs> like, what? whoa, that's some, yeah. that's some really ra- radical stuff right there. Um, yeah. And that, that we know that this is this carnivore diet is meant to be short-termed. Um, it's meant to have high-quality proteins. Mm-hmm. It's not meant for everybody, particularly right. if you don't have a solid foundation on your digestive habits and, and eating habits right now. Yep. In, in, exactly. Anything else? No. If you guys are curious, please feel free to reach out to me on you know Instagram. You can email me at emily at proclivity.co, and I'd be happy to help you out. I definitely don't want you doing it the wrong way. (laughs) That's for sure. That's for sure. Well, you guys, once again, we appreciate you guys joining. We love giving you the best possible content. If you like the show, please rank us, rank us, review us. (laughs) And you could rank us too, sure. Scale one to 10, 10 being high, one being low. We could be 11s if you want. Give us, give us a review. Uh, it really helps us uh, to continue uh, growing in the podcast and with our business. Uh, if you guys are curious ab- about what we do and you're like, wait a second, I want to get digestive habits. I want to create a healthier and happier life. I want to be able to have metabolic flexibility where my body can burn and be fat adaptive. So I'm just standing here burning more fat. I want to have energy throughout the day. These are all things that we teach you how to do. And it's quite simple yet simple and easy are not the same thing. And we help you get through this, a 12-week program called the Proclivity Method. All you need to do, go to the website, www.proclivity.co. Click on the Clarity Call. It's a free coaching call with Coach Emily and I. If you're not interested in doing the Proclivity Method and you're like, I just want to talk carnivore, great. We'll talk about carnivore for 45 minutes. We are here to help you. Ain't that right? That's true. Give us a call. Set it up. That's right. That's right. All right, you guys. That's it for this show, episode 57. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to us. If not, we'll see you next time. See ya.